Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about starting IVs, some tips and recommendations I have if you're struggling to start IVs. If you're looking to improve your knowledge about nursing or to gain more knowledge about nursing in general, please consider subscribing down below. I upload a video every single week and you don't want to miss them. Also be sure to click the links in the description box down below as I do have free resources such as a free NCLEX ebook that I created for you to help you pass the NCLEX. Also a free fitness and nutrition guide where you can download completely for free. So as many of you know, I recently started working in the emergency department and through my training, I really needed to know how to start IVs but I sucked at IVs. I created a video a long time ago where I showed you how you can start an IV, but I wasn't really proficient at it. I knew how to start them, I knew the general idea, but I didn't know that it was gonna be this difficult. So in this video, I really wanna talk about ways you can improve inserting IVs and provide you with a little bit more tips and recommendation now that I've become pretty good at inserting them. I still struggle with them sometimes, like I can never, I can't put an 18 gauge IV in someone's hand of course, but I really wanted to provide you with a little bit of knowledge and some tips that I have so that you're able to start IVs better. So once I learned how to start IVs, I thought I was going to be great at it. I thought it's no problem, it's going to be super easy, but what I didn't really recognize is that different people and different veins have different levels to them. So I'll pull up a graph that will provide you with a little bit more information about different IV uh, difficulties. The higher level the, that's listed here, the more difficult the IV is gonna be. Now, I didn't know this, and I think this is actually quite useful. If you know that someone is a difficult IV start, you're able to identify areas which are gonna be easier for you to put IVs. Now, there's a caveat here. Inserting IVs easily may not be the best way for you to be able to gain IV access. For example, if you get someone's IV in a hand and they're a patient who is very, um, has behavior issues, they're gonna move their hand or, or say, let's, a better example is if someone has dementia and they don't know what an IV is or they have memory issues and you tell them what the IV is but they don't really, they forget in a few minutes and then all of a sudden they see a thing sticking in their hand, they're gonna rip it off and then blood's gonna be everywhere and it's gonna be a complete disaster. So inserting IVs I think is pretty easy in the hand, but it has the most risk of blowing. Anyways, so as you can see in this graph, the veins that are visible, easy to palpate, and large in size is obviously gonna be the easiest. But veins that you can't really see or can't palpate, may need to, you may need to utilize different techniques in order for you to be able to insert that IV. There are times that even now that I've started like a thousand IVs, I still sometimes struggle with them. Some IVs are so difficult that you need a certain ultrasound device for you to be able to insert them. And there's no shame to that, you know, many, many people can't start IVs on difficult people and it requires some in-depth knowledge about where you insert someone whenever you can't see their vein or whenever you can't palpate their vein. So here's the anatomy of an IV. So as you can see, there's different segments of an IV that you just need to know what they do. And I explained more of this in my first video where I talk about how to insert IVs. So be sure to check that video out. So now let's talk about a very important part of the IV, which is the needle, the place where you insert the IV. So as you can see here, the needle has a specific bevel. I've highlighted it in red, and it's very important for you to be able to identify this. This is important because if you have a vein, you need to be able to identify which angle you want to be able to insert that IV. That's why I drew the... Um, gray lines and the red lines indicating different angles of insertion. So as you can see that blue line over here, that is um, a vein. And if you go in at various angles, it's going to be easier for you to blow the vein or it's going to be more difficult for you to start 
that IV in a vein. So it's very important for you to be for you to be able to make sure that the bevel is facing up so that whenever you insert it, you're able to puncture the skin and go right into the vein and get flashback. Another important point is the fact that you need to go at a safe angle. When you see someone has a very small vein and you go put in the IV like this, well, it's not gonna work. You need to be able to go in safely and go in at a lower angle. And that's something that I struggled with. I didn't really understand the different angles of IV insertion. And a lot of times what I would do is I would just go in like this, hoping that I would get flashback. And once I would, I would just push the needle in further. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna just go in safely, go in, go in at a safe angle, go in like, Instead of going in like this, you take the IV and you insert it lower, and then you insert, once you get a little bit of flashback, you insert it a little bit more, and you immediately withdraw the needle catheter. That will give you, ensure that your IV is in the vein, and also not puncture it through and through. A lot of times what I would do is I would hit the vein, get flashback, and not move the needle far back enough, or I would get flashback and just not push it in a little bit more and I would try and pull back and I wouldn't get any flashback. So it's very important for you to go in at a safe angle, insert the needle in, go in a little bit more and immediately pull back on the needle so that you're able to get flashback. Another important reason why I showed you a picture of the anatomy of an IV is because once you pull back on the needle there, the needle is gone. There's no metal left. It's all of that plastic, um, plastic, I don't know, film that fills into the vein. So all you gotta do is make sure you go in, get a little bit of the needle, a little bit more in, and withdraw and push the plastic in. That provides you with the best success rate for inserting IVs because it provides you with the least amount of chance of going through or puncturing it up and out of the vein. That's the technique that I used and no one really explained that to me which I found to be very very helpful. The next tip I have is you need to be able to identify the patient's skin integrity. Now as you see as I showed you in the graph if you're above the age of 70 that puts you at an elevated difficulty at inserting IVs. That's because it's your, your, eye, your veins are gonna be much more difficult for them to stay still. They're gonna be more rolly is what they call it. They call it rolly veins. And so it's very important to identify the age of the patient and identify how tight you need to be able to pull the skin. But the issue with that is whenever you pull the skin, you're no longer able to see the vein. So let me give you an example. I've tourniqueted my arm here and as you can see, I have a vein right there. And let's say that I move it down like this. All of a sudden, you can't see the vein anymore. So inserting it is gonna be very difficult. Or let's say that you pull the vein, pull the skin down like that. It's gonna be more difficult for you to see the vein, especially if it's an older individual. Now, I personally like the technique of pulling the skin down like this because you have better vision and you're able to put your finger where the vein is. So if you go like this, that's like shooting in the dark. Like, how can I see the vein? It's very, very vague. But if you pull it, let's say you pull the skin on an elderly patient down, you know that, that the fingertip where my nail is that's where you wanna be inserting the IV, in the middle of the, of the vein, of course, and you, it gives you a little bit of guidance on where you should insert the IV. Now, another thing, another tip I have is that say you get a really elderly patient and you're not able to, you know, you go like this and you can't see it and then you go like that and you still can't see it. A technique that I use is I put a um, alcohol, squ alcohol swab or I put a chlorhexidine swab, the corner of it on the vein. So I'll pull up a picture of it right here. Is That's what I do. So I'll, I'll do it on my arm right now and show you here. I have an alcohol swab. And so here is my vein. And what I would do is I would put the corner of the, uh, of the alcohol swab 
right there so that when I pull like this, I know that the edge of this, the edge of the alcohol or the corner of the alcohol swab, that's where I wanna be inserting. So I don't even have to worry about um, just where, where that vein is because I have an indicator, I have a marker that shows me where exactly is the middle of the vein and when I insert, I can easily just go right here and identify that that's the middle of it. So there's two more tips that I wanna talk about. One is identifying the gauge of the IV. So you don't wanna be, you don't wanna put an 18 gauge IV in someone's hand. That is not gonna work unless they're like a monster of a human being and they have massive veins. You're not gonna be able to put an 18 gauge in someone's hand. Now, I personally can't do it and if you're that skilled, then so be it, try for it. But generally speaking, the hand has smaller veins. It's a, it's a smaller area and that, that area is gonna have smaller veins. So you're gonna wanna put a smaller gauge or a higher gauge, I should say, IV in. So typically when I go for an uh, IV in someone's hand, I go for a 22 gauge. That will give me the most chance of success. And generally speaking, I try and avoid the hand, but the hand is one of the easiest ways to get IV access. And a lot of times when I'm very busy, I just quickly want to get IV access to control someone's pain, to control someone's nausea, whatever the case may be. And so I quickly want to get IV access. So I just quickly put a 22 in the hand and then I come in and reassess that IV site. And that's a great technique that you can use in order for you to get quick, easy IV access. Another, the other tip I have is identifying what the patient is going to need. So if you're, this is more so for an ER nurse. So if you're an ER nurse and you know that someone's coming in with chest pain, they have the troponin biomarker, you know, their ECG looks a little bit funky, they have T-wave inversions, and there's some ischemia noted, then you wanna be able to put um, a, at least a 20 gauge in the ACF so that when they go for CT with contrast, they're able to, you know, put that contrast in. So if you identify the patient's symptoms and you think ahead to their journey of the hospital and know that they need a CT scan with contrast and you think that that's the case, try and get an IV, at least a 20 gauge in their ACF. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I told you or I taught you something that you didn't know and I hope it was useful. If it was, I would greatly appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, if you share it with someone and thank you for staying till the end of this video. I'll cut to the scene where I show you where you can download the free resources like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So first you wanna go on to my website www.simplefitnurse.com Then you wanna go on to my books here. And then after that, you wanna just click over the book that you want to download and click the download link and it will automatically pop up in a PDF form. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one.